What I would say, there is nobody knows the Rubias more than me. This is because when Muse Kamau Kiroga was working in the farm, there was no good schools for, the, for the, his children. He talked to my father. My dad was a, a priest in charge of the then uh, Maragua Parish. Now they call it the Mar Moranga South or something like that. Maragua Parish is where my father was working from uh, Chania River to Maragua River, from the border with the Wakamba and the, uh, the mountain. We used to call them uh, Abadayas, now we call them uh, um, these Abadayas Mountains. All the churches here were being run by some priests who happened to be one of them was my dad, Kachanja. And uh, Kamau said, what do I do? There is no good school here. So my father took children of Kamau with him to our family in Kahuya Mission. I was sleeping in one bed with Hannah Rubia, pulling it each other. We went to Kahuya Girls. I was a bit older than she is. And then after that, when we finished in Kahuya, Harry Francis then, he can get somebody to tell him. He won't have more than three girls at uh, Alliance Boys. I was to go there, he said he can't have too many women there. So there, luckily, there was a, a lady called Miriam Janish. You can see I'm not reading, I'm talking what I know. <laughs> Miriam, an educationist woman from, I think, Rhodesia, now Zimbabwe or Zambia or something like that. When he came, he found there was no good school for high school for girls. He, she established a college called Government African Teachers College. I was there with some other ladies, with Mrs. Rubia, some Ladies from Western Kenya, I see our Muheshimiwa here, our Maloa, you know, Priscilla, Boa, or we were all there. Then afterward, we were sent to teach at the same school, Kahuhia. Again, we were given, Hannah was given this house and me this as teachers. She was teaching at practicing school. I was teaching at the uh, teacher's college. We said, how can we be sitting like this? We left one room, we continued sharing one room, and had one other room, we made it a kitchen and a sitting room. Who would you know Hannah Rubia than me? <laughs> and then when she, this Rubia came up from all these places, he came there to look for his wife. <laughs> there were many, many girls there. And uh, when he came, he fell in love with Hannah. She was a very, very beautiful girl. She's a mixture of Gikuyu and, and Mukamba. Her mother was a Kamba. She was a beautiful, I don't know why we used to have all these long hairs. Girls these days, I think you use too much chemicals eating. <laughs> then, next time, her, Rubia is chasing her and I'm sitting with me. Then she, he decided to marry her. Who is taking Hannah to Rubia? It's me. If you look at the pictures, she didn't know anybody. And I was there, if you look at her wedding picture, you won't know me, I was young, but uh, you can see one tall girl with the long hair, it's me. <laughs> so, there was a time before independence. The white community, Muzungus, started to get worried about these upcoming Africans. And they said, went to Kiambu and say, chop one area of Kiambu and we push these Akina Rubia, Akina, all these getting educated and trying to be this and this, put them in Kangemi, 
Lilota, help them to get home there. They are starting to come to Westlands and Lovington and all these, they are interfering, she puts them there. One of them was Rubia. He took four plots and built a house. And they said, come, you can take a plot here. I took two next to them. <laughs> you see? So, Rubia, anywhere, he thought, uh, I was like a second, I, I like a sister to him. If there is any problem, he shared with me. If you touch me, I go to uh, share with him. And I would say, Nairobi was Nairobi. When we were very big, Nairobi with exhibition, outside City Hall, on Saturday we go there to dance at night. There was a restaurant there where you can eat, the lawyers, everybody. Schools were good, healthy centers, social centers, immunization, hair of the children when we were being given injection at these schools during Rubia. If I write Rubia, you may have to write a book. To me, from Uranga, I feel lost. Not long ago, I went to bury Matiba. I have buried Michuki. I have buried Keanu. I don't know what is left. But I hope, as I sit here, I see Mwangi, our governor there, I see our senator there, I see Kambi Gitura, Peter Kenneth, we are throwing a ball to you. Nairobi was known for business for Africans. He was, Rubia was the first to establish a big, one of the biggest distribution shops or now you call it the Hellas we used to call it the White, White Aways. A big distribution soap. They have all these things. During his time, they used to develop homes. Dandora, Dandora Umoja, and some of the Buruburu. They sell to people. Bring you whatever you have. Then you have a home. What happened? Call us before we sleep, because we can sleep any time, but let us follow that. Perhaps I don't know much on, uh, or in politics. I'm more, no more, as a person, as a loving parent and wife, and as a person of growing up. And Rubia is tough, was very tough man. I hear a, a, a song somebody sings who says, I am unbogable. I am unbogable. I say, that's like Rubia. You can't shake him. He was too tough for everybody. Let us pray that he sleeps in peace. 